Hot Oil, it stands for Wood Duck 40. And the traditional fly, of course, is tied using wood duck. Now, wood duck is one of those materials that you know people hear about and have seen. A lot of people don't really even know that it's pretty readily available. When I was a kid growing up back in the 60s and learning how to tie, what was more expensive? A jungle cock neck, wood duck feathers, or a grizzly neck? Who knows? It was actually the grizzly neck. The wood duck actually came second. The cheap thing was jungle cock, believe it or not. We couldn't get, this is in the days before um, Henry Hoffman, before Buck Metz, before Ted Hebert. This is before genetics for chickens took hold in the fly tying industry. And wood duck is one of those wonderful materials that we always had to buy and use mallard instead. It was just not as cool, but wood duck in and of itself is a really, really wonderful material. It's finer textured than mallard. The bars are contrast, are more contrasty. They have more sparkle and life to them. Um, they're not as got, don't have as much contract as say, a contrast to say, um, a pintail or um, gadwall, uh, but they're really a really nice feather. And just using dyed mallard doesn't necessarily do it justice. I'm resetting a bobbin with some new thread. Hopefully, we'll get farther along with this one. Now, I'm going to be using two different materials tonight, and I'm going to do something very similar to what we did with the last fly. Now, normally, the WD-40 is tied with a wood duck tail and like an olive or tan or whatever thread-colored body you want, and it is just thread, and then a dubbing material, and then you finish. But I'm going to do something just a touch different to show you how you can mix this up a little bit. So I'm going to grab some wood duck. I've got two different materials here. I've got wood duck and I've also got something that's marked mallard flank, but in reality it's actually Egyptian goose. And I'm going to show you how we're going to use that in conjunction with the uh, wood duck. So I want some nice marked in fact, there's a very nice wood duck feather. I think, let's see if I can get this in front. You can see it's got some nice barring to it. It's really, really distinct and separate from the way that mallard looks when it's dyed. I'm going to make a nice short little tail, but I'm going to use a bunch of this material. In fact, sometimes, because I want to use this um, for the thorax, sometimes I'll put in more and then cut off some of the tail. But because we're going to do something different, I'm just going to put in enough for the tail. Very short, stubby little tail. This fly should be very, very lightly tied. Okay. I'm going to wind up a little bit and back down just to kind of smooth things out. And now I'm going to use, and you can use regular mallard for this if you'd like. I'm going to use Egyptian goose because it's a little bit stiffer and easier to work with uh, for what we're going to do here. <coughs> Wood duck is a really great material, but this is almost overkill when you try to use wood duck for what I'm going to use it right now. Now remember with the halo, we used the pheasant tail for the body material and actually wrapped it. Well, I'm going to do something similar here. I'm actually going to use this Egyptian goose, or you could, like I said, you could use dyed mallard. And I'm going to use that as a body material over the top. And since I've got this light colored thread down, I'm going to do the same routine I did before with the crystal flash, a couple of strands, use our easy tie-in method. I'm using a little bit more now because I'm going to actually use this as part of the wing case as well. The more crystal flash you use on the WD-40, the more it cements its position as being the top fly. The less you use on a halo, cements its position of being the bottom fly. The reason? Emergers tend to show more life and show more movement as they go vertically through the water column. The crystal flash in this particular case is giving these flies a sense of lifelike, 
a, a, a sense of living and being alive and moving and trying to break free of their exo the nymphal shuck and the, uh, the, the, their, their nymphal case. It's their metamorphosis as they turn into winged adults. And the crystal flash really helps that along. So now I'm just going to kind of wide space the goose slash mallard and allow that crystal flash to show through. If you want to have a fly that's a little bit more durable, then you can use some crystal flash and use it as a rib. Now we've got it showing through. I'm going to save these butt ends along with everything else. And this is going to be my wing case. Now you can use whatever dubbing material you want. For whatever reasons, I forgot to bring the dubbing material out. So, rather than doing that, let's see. Oh, I know what I'll do. Perfect. I've got some uh, African goat up here. Traditionally, this material um, that you would use is actually a... Um, a lot of people like to use muskrat, even dyed muskrat. I love it. It's great stuff. And they leave the guard hairs in. This is a very small fly, so I'm not going to use a lot of this. In fact, I'll probably have to pull a lot of it off the uh, thread after I've wrapped it. But I do like it a little bit spiky, and this is a good material for that. Again, the color is just going to be whatever you think you're going to want to use to match the hatch. That actually looks pretty good right there. I'm going to shove this back a little bit. If you ever crowd your headspace, don't hesitate. Use your fingernails, shove it back. Now I'm going to grab this and pull over the top. So it's sort of a combination flashback, um, wood duck, however you want to call it. There's crystal flash in that wing case, and it literally will help make this fly look more lifelike in the mind of the trout. Boy, it's a lot nicer to do a whip finish when you've got more thread to work with. Mm-hmm. <laughs>